hello and welcome back to Adobe Live, everyone. <laughs> welcome in, friends. Thank you all so much for sticking around to hang out uh, with us for this new segment. And a big shout out to Kathleen for that wonderful uh, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. It looked very interesting. Um, I can't wait to get into the entries for today. That looked wonderful. Um, I see familiar faces in the chat. Uh, Donna. Uh, Ronald, Lindsay, Sam, Adobe Live is in the house today, uh, Alberto Silva, Vanessa. It's good to see all of you folks. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, my name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your host for this awesome uh, design stream with my new friend, Ann Chen. Ann, how are you today? Hi, everyone. I'm doing great. How are you, Voodoo Val? I'm doing excellent. Thank you for asking. I'm super excited because they haven't seen what you're working on today, but I have, and I'm I'm pumped <laughs> about it. It's going to be super rad. Um, but before we get into um, what we're going to be working on um, and, and what Anna is doing today, I would like to take a quick moment to look at our schedule, um, go over what we've already done today and what you folks can expect uh, from the stream after us. So I'm going to pop over here. Um, we had the getting started with masking with Jesus Ramirez this morning at 7.30, which was wonderful. Uh, as I said, Kathleen Martin was just here with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Uh, and then we're here at 9.30 Pacific Time with Ann Chen um, doing some awesome hand lettering, uh, followed by Andrew Hawk Rattle, um, who is going to be doing the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. We'll have Brittany back for another awesome workflows and pro tips in Adobe XD coming up at noon, followed by Andrea Hawk, who will be doing the XD Daily Creative Challenge. And then we're going to wind down at the end of the day with Alice Lee and her epic doodle therapy segment, uh, which is super cool, by the way. Highly recommend you guys uh, check that out. It's an excellent way to kind of wind down from the workday, uh, just get some little sketches going and stuff and 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 close out um, close out the, the afternoon. Uh, so I'm going to pop back over to our full cam screen. Um, and why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you and what you do for those um, in the chat who maybe are unfamiliar with you and your work or who weren't here yesterday to hear about you? Sure. Um, I am a freelance illustrator based in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I do lettering based designs and also murals for corporate spaces. And um, yesterday we worked on um, lettering in Adobe Fresco. So I used the multicolor feature to hand letter people's names from the chat which was awesome. It was super cool. We had, we ended up with like this really cool, almost like a poster of just like friendly people from the Adobe Live community. Um, and if you did not catch yesterday's stream, you definitely need to go check out the VOD because as she said, she used the multicolor uh, feature in Fresco and that was like mind blowing to me. I thought I was good at Fresco and then I met Anne. So <laughs> that's how it went yesterday. Um, but I'm going to pop over to our work uh, stream here uh, so everyone can can see what you've got going on. This is really, really beautiful. It looks like you're, you've Thank got you. like these gorgeous tiles of letters. Why don't you kind of explain what you're working on and then, and then just jump into it. Let us see uh, how it all, how it all works. Yeah. So today I am going to create a paper illustration in um, Illustrator, and then we'll jump into Photoshop later to add um, the shadows and textures. So I have some examples of ones that I've made in the past um the l and the k these were for the 36 days of type challenge that i participated in a few months ago oh gosh, um, and then so cool. i also did like a bigger piece where it says feeling all feeling all sorts of uninspired <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that's that's like a big mood that's like <laughs> very relatable um i really truly like i like when i look at these I really can feel like the paper texture and that, that paper vibe. I think you've done a really great job of kind of making all of these little elements really feel like they're floating in this space and just kind of layered on top of each other. So I'm super excited to see um, how you do that. What do you, what is, what's the first step with this? How do you, how do you get started? Yeah, so I would usually sketch it out first, mm -hmm. um, just figure out what kind of design I want to do. So today I have the letter A for you guys. And um, to kind of go off on this theme of L for lemons, I'm doing 
A for apple blossoms. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so these will be cute little white and pink flowers. And um, so yeah, I just bring my sketch into Adobe Illustrator. And right now I'm working on building out my shapes, mm -hmm. which will then bring to Photoshop. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, uh, yes, uh, Michelle, I agree. Michelle is saying this looks beautiful. Uh, and Michelle. Eric Sue is saying it's cool to see Anne's artwork around the city. Uh, David Hi, Goodman is saying, Hi, Anne, Salt Lake City. I grew up in Provo. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Welcome, Hi, Lyndon. Dave. Good to see everyone. Wade is here. Uh, Vanessa, loving the eyeshadow today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, uh, Jose Vadi says, Good morning. Good morning, Jose. Good morning, Colby. It's good to see all of you folks here. Um, yeah, I'm super excited about this. I, I recently, um, was trying to like attempt a project like this. So this is going to be really, uh, informative for me just to kind of see, um, how one would navigate through kind of like a layered piece like this. Um, I see, like you said, you're kind of blocking out the larger, um, shapes and things to kind of build everything on top of your sketch. Um, do you, cause like you said, you're going to move from photo or from illustrator to Photoshop. Do you do all of the coloring and shadows and textures in Photoshop? Or do you do a lot of that in illustrator as well? Like what's the difference between the programs and what you do? So I have done one piece. Um, I don't have the example here, but I did do all the color and shadow in illustrator. Okay. So that is a possible um option mm -hmm. what i found is that when you try to do the shadow in illustrator it for my computer it's really difficult for it to load the shadows gotcha um because it's vector based um mm -hmm. so when you bring it all to photoshop it's just a lot easier to manipulate the shadows so i prefer to do it in photoshop okay um, so all the color and textures will be done in Photoshop later. Yeah, because it looks like in the, the finished versions that you have as an example for us today, it looks like there is a lot of that like construction papery like noise texture in it. And I would, mm -hmm. I would, because I'm not as familiar with Illustrator as I am with Photoshop. I typically use Photoshop and Fresco for like everything I do. Um, and I know exactly how I would achieve those textures in Photoshop. But yeah, I was just curious to know if that was something you did um, uh, in Illustrator or Photoshop. Cause I've seen some people get some pretty crazy textures, um, in, in Illustrator too. And I'm just like, you can do that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be really fun. Um, Vanessa says, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's, that's, it sounds like a pretty solid workflow to me too, Vanessa. Um, Jill is saying hello. Krista is saying hello from the Netherlands. Welcome so far away. Uh, Susan saying greetings from Dubai. Uh, welcome in, Mark. It's good to see you. Uh, Dave is loving the paper cutout style. Yeah, I really am too. I have um, uh, this book that it's it's like a like a children's story book that my mom has had since like the eighties, and um, the whole entire motif of the book, all of the illustrations and everything, are like characters made with like pieces of construction paper. So it's a style. Oh. I it, it was one of my favorite books growing up. It's a style I've been like really fond of for a long time. So this is like right up my alley. Um, Sean, hey everyone, good to see you, Sean. Um, I like to watch the procedure and how this is this illustration is created from from Donna. Wonderful. Well, we get to see. Um, the pretty much the basic structure of how she goes about this. So we, we get to, we get to figure it out today. I wonder, I'm wondering how many people in chat are going to attempt this, uh, style. Um, now that we're getting to see Anne work on it, how many of you folks are going to, are going to try something like this? I know that I am. Um, Anthony says, I really should use illustrator more. I use Photoshop mostly too. I really think it's, it's all about, you know, what is most comfortable for mm -hmm. you. Um, like, and you're kind of using, um, two different programs that do different things that work for your, for your workflow, you know? Um, and I kind of do that as well. Uh, sometimes I actually get into Adobe XD to do things too. Just like whenever I know, oh. um, a program is going to work 
perfectly for a specific thing, I will just use that for it. Um, and I think sometimes people think maybe they have to be using Illustrator for vector stuff and they have to be using Photoshop for, for this and that. Um, but I really think it all comes down to personal preference and, and what's comfortable. Yeah. You know? Definitely. I would say one of the, one of the biggest mistakes I made at the beginning of my art journey was trying to force myself to do what other people were doing the exact way they were doing it, you know? Um, and I think what it comes down to is like, you find your groove and that groove is everything and you keep on your groove and you can improve that groove, you know, you can, you can, uh, improve your, your process and everything. But I think if you find something that works, then that's what works and, and do that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't think, I mean, for, for like Illustrator and Photoshop, a lot of times I feel like I'm probably not doing it the most efficient way, but it's the way I know. So mm -hmm. I'll continue to do it my way. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, and we have so many different designers and, and, and people that come to show their process here on Adobe Live. And uh, a common uh, inquiry that I see in the chat uh, a lot when we have different people on is people asking like, oh, why don't you use a clipping mask for this? Or why aren't you doing this in Illustrator? Why aren't you doing it this way or that? And I always tell people the beauty of this and getting to see so many different people work is everybody really does have their own process. And sometimes um, a process might not be as efficient as some people think as far as like the time they spend on certain things. But really, um, if you know how to do something a certain way and it works for you, then that is the most efficient way. If you like to do things the long way because you enjoy the scenic route, so to speak, of that part of your process um, and it makes you happy, then that's what you should do, you know? Um, and I think Photoshop especially um, is such a vast program that there really are like dozens and dozens of ways to do the same thing, you know? So mm -hmm. you, you just find what, what works and, and go for that. Uh, let's see. Delinden says, absolutely, your groove, indeed. Um, and I thought I saw uh, somebody say, yeah, Anthony Ritson is saying, I think I want to experiment with this style. I love it. Yes, 100%. Uh, Tiana says, good morning, everyone. Good morning to you as well, Tiana. Welcome to the chat. Uh, did you use any reference before sketching? Uh, they want to know. Um, for the flowers... I did look up some apple blossoms just to get just to see how like how many numbers of petals mm -hmm. an apple blossom has and for the letter A um, this was just something that I came off like I came up with mm -hmm. um, I knew I wanted to do like a slab serif style that's an inverse um, contrast mm -hmm. so you have like the top um, and the bottom being really fat and then your sides being really thin thinner. and slender. Um, yeah. yeah. So this is a style that I don't really do often in my own work. So that's why I'm trying it out. Yeah, that's really cool. I think too, like it, it, it seems like even though you're trying new things, like you have like a really great understanding of like your own, like you have confidence in your process for creating this kind of style and this kind of look. So um, it's, I, I imagine it can be like pretty relaxing to just, even though you're trying a new like letter style to just kind of go for it and let it let it flow and and do your thing that's typically how I feel like even if I'm trying like a new subject matter like painting is once you find that groove like I said earlier sometimes you can kind of just even though you're trying new things just kind of submerge yourself in the work and 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 go for it um mm -hmm. and it's always really fun to like you say to test out new little things because you never really know 100% what you're gonna get you know so yeah and i just really love to vector stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd like to work with um with vectors a little bit more i think it's something that i've uh shied away from for a lot of years because my own style is so like painterly and stuff that i find i get really nervous with vector because it's so precise right 
Um, mm-hmm. But it's definitely something I'd like to have a lot more um, confidence in and a lot more experience with. So this, like I said, this might just be that thing that uh, that that pushes me towards it and uh, gets me to do a little bit more. Um, Barb says, hello. Welcome, Barb. It's good to see you. Um, hello, Barb. Tiana says, is your monochromatic look going to be colored? Are you using global colors to achieve this? Sorry if you already answered something similar. So I'm using monochromatic right now just to, just so that I can see like my different shapes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be doing all the colors in Photoshop. And yeah, I haven't used much with global colors, but I will be doing like a global lighting source for the shadows once I'm in Photoshop. Nice. Vector is scary, says Archiro. Yeah, if you're if you're not used to like the precise um, nature of of vector, then it can be a little bit daunting. Um, I I have been actually like kind of forcing myself to use the vector brushes in fresco recently, and I found that in a really weird way, it's actually improving like my painting because when I use the vector brushes because everything is precise i really have to place lines with purpose um i can't just like kind of sketch and have like you know random marks everywhere like it doesn't blend as well so getting into it a little bit even though it's scary it can really help you um to i i guess i would say um it can help you to really have purpose behind everything that you put down onto your canvas. Um, it can also help you like kind of formulate the most efficient way of getting your point across too, because things are so precise, which is, is has been kind of an interesting discovery of mine. Uh, Vector brushes and fresco are so great, says Michelle. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, oh, and they say, <laughs> um, uh, I hope I'm not pronouncing your name wrong, but it looks like your name is um, Abhishek. I hope that that is how I say it. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, he says, the L is literally lit. <laughs> yes, I agree. Let's go back to the L for yes. a moment. That's so beautiful. And the colors work so well together. Um, I'm really anxious to see, you said that like the, the blossoms, the apple blossoms for the A um, that you're working on are pink. Are you going to do like a pink motif or what kind of colors are you thinking about for the rest of this piece? I think I will have more of like a purple and green color scheme. Ooh. Um, maybe the background is main, mostly purple and then the leaves will definitely be green and have like pops of pink being the flowers. Oh, that sounds awesome. Purple's my favorite color, so I'm into this. <laughs> Yay! I don't Davika. think I have a favorite color. <laughs> no, really? Some people don't. Some people just like them all equally, or it doesn't matter. They just kind of work with color when color works well with, mm-hmm. you know, with other things. <laughs> uh, Tiana, or Anne, are you using real flowers as your inspiration for your current A piece? Um, Yeah, like I mentioned before, I use some references, Mm -hmm. but for the most part, um, because my illustration, like paper cutouts in general are just pretty flat. So I did um, simplify the apple blossom. Um, So, but it is the general shape of an apple blossom. Awesome. Uh, Megara, welcome. It's good to see you. Um, Mad says... And what made you want to do hand lettering as a career path? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I just really enjoyed like hand lettering. Um, I worked as a graphic designer for five years before doing freelance full time. And by the way, I'm really new to freelance. Like I've only been doing it for about a year. Oh, wow. Um, but I just felt that hand lettering is just way more enjoy enjoyable than my job. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, and I, at the time I was seeing a lot of um, other people on Instagram had finding success doing lettering full time. And Mm -hmm. that encouraged me to 
try it out myself. Nice. Um, I feel like I would really regret not not going freelance, even if like it's not successful, you know, a few years down the road, mm -hmm. it's like no problem. It's just great that I got to exper experience it. Yeah, for sure. Um, Isabella is saying pen tool tricks, please. Maybe as you're kind of creating these shapes, it looks like you might be using some hotkeys to like form uh, some of these shapes and things with the pen tool, like the pedals on there. Maybe you can explain a little of the technical side of how you're how you're doing that, like moving the points around and stuff like that. Um, yeah, let me try my best to explain what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a little hard when, yeah, I'm, I'm just used to doing it uh, without really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, a, lot of, a lot of the shapes, um, when I'm controlling my Bezier handles, a lot of times I'm pressing shift to make sure that um, that I'm moving my anchors in a like a in in a certain direction, and that I'm not moving all of my other anchor points all over the place. Gotcha. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but yeah, it makes sense to me. Um, yeah, I am just building out some ped pedal little bulbs right now. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Yeah, and I repeat for this. Yes, Ravi, I agree. Are you are actually are you using a stylus for this or are you using your mouse oh, today? I am just using my mouse. Nice. Um and the keyboard for this. But that's really cool that you guys can use Wacom pens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to also vector. I have not done that before. I used to have a Wacom when I was in high school and I used it to draw all my anime characters mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah, I've even seen people that they get on better just using a trackpad, which that blows my mind because oh. I can't use a trackpad even to save my life. And so when I hear that people use the trackpad specifically for like all of their, even like, like when they're using Adobe XD, I think when they're doing like graphic design and everything, they're just using the trackpad to drag things around. And I'm like, how does this wow. even work? How do you do this? Yeah, I've seen videos of, um, there is a very talented lettering artist named Kevin Cantrell. He's based in Utah. Mm -hmm. And I've seen video um, of him building out letter forms um, without even like a sketch underneath in Illustrator. And he's wow. able to like build out words that are in a rounded layout. What? And it's just really amazing. <laughs> that's insane. That's like, that's like those people that like, they don't need to sketch and they just straight up like whip out mm -hmm. like a perfect portrait painting and i'm like you did no planning for this and they're like yeah i know and i'm like okay <laughs> good for you i wish i could do that that's so cool <laughs> yeah i wish i could do that yeah same um alberto says christine arth is a trackpad master hashtag respect yeah christine arth um she is um a wonderful uh, designer, graphic designer, and, and she does like a lot of really super cool branding. Um, and she is, um, a guest and host with us on Adobe live sometimes. And yeah, she uses a trackpad for everything that she does. And I'm thinking over here, like I probably couldn't even do what she does with a mouse or, um, a Wacom stylus. And she's over here just like flipping around on the trackpad, like la la la. And I'm like, wow, that is some serious skill. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, Julia Leclerc says, what kind of work can you get with this style? Um, do you mm. mean, Julia, like what, what sort of clients and gigs can you get doing this sort of work? Um, I think we kind of talked about that yesterday, didn't we, Anne? Like the sorts of, of, of work that you can get, um, doing yeah. this. Well, with lettering, I mean, you could get work in 
book covers, mm -hmm. um, editorial illustrations. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I've seen people get their lettering on beverage bottles, so package design. Um, I would say this specific style, like the paper construction look, mm -hmm. um, is probably best for like editorial, like in magazines or yeah. you know, newspaper, that sort of genre. We had a uh, wonderful artist and, and friend of mine on Adobe Live, um, actually um, pretty often um, by the name of Shauna Lynn. Um, and oh, yes, she, I know Shauna. I love Shauna. She's wonderful. I'm so glad you know her. Um, but Shauna um, has talked a few times about um, ways that you can use uh, hand lettering to uh, get jobs and gigs and things for doing number one like interior design like for children's rooms and things or yeah, even like murals and stuff yeah yeah and doing like um like i mean you're already doing like you know alphabet cards but you know like doing things for like children's classrooms even um and mm -hmm. doing doing things like that or doing just um like I could definitely see like these tiles being printed as just like a poster or print to decorate um, a bedroom or decorate the front of a, like a storefront or something. Um, so lots and lots of things. And um, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday and I was saying, I think that this kind of work is like the kind of really beautiful de decorative work that you might see on um, gift cards for like Starbucks or something like that, or Barnes and Nobles, because they always have just really beautiful uh, artwork on the front of their gift cards. Um, so there's a lot of stuff, even greeting cards or postcards yes. could be a market for this sort of thing, so. Yes, anything with words, the possibilities mm -hmm. are endless. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, let's see, Alberto says, question, what or who are your inspirations, Anne? Um. See, some of my inspirations, I mentioned yesterday that I really love the work of Lauren Hom. Mm -hmm. um, she's amazing and she gives really great advice for anyone who's interested in doing freelance full time. Um, let's see, for, for paper illustrations, I have a couple inspirations as well. Um, Ade Hoag, he's a lettering artist and also he does paper cut illustrations by hand, mm -hmm. which is really phenomenal. Um, yeah, there are like paper artists out there who cut out the papers with like little exacto knives or they use this Cricut machine um, that die cuts the design out for, yeah. for them. And that is like way more intricate than what I'm doing right now with the computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see if um, I can find, um, there was one a uh, paper artist that I followed recently, and I'd love to know if you are familiar with her work, but I'm gonna have to like find her, okay. um, her thing. Yeah. But it's it kind of like good, um, I would say good, uh, oh, uh, uh, Margaret Scrinkle. Are you familiar yes, with Margaret? Yes, I follow her on Instagram. I yeah, love her work. Her work is work. beautiful. Yes. Just like these little flowers. Mm -hmm. All of the, it's, it's, it's really cool the way that she does the, the, um like all the intricate tiny like f like ferns and fronds and flowers mm -hmm. and and plant life and then kind of collages them together um and that's really cool and that's honestly immediately what i thought of when i saw the paper stuff and i was like oh my gosh this is going to be such a fun day because i yeah. kind of get lost like <laughs> scrolling through those um so yeah there's it's uh, actually it's like i said it's funny that you're doing this cuz i even just kind of had like the whole world of like paper art, um, like modern paper art recently opened up to me because like I said, I'd seen it, you know, during my life before, but I didn't really realize like how many people were like still doing that and, and how popular it is and how many awesome ideas people come up with for projects. So it's been, it's been really cool. Yeah, I actually did a project um, in college for a motion graphics class Ooh. where I created a, a video um, 
that would be like the opening to the show Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. And so I made um, characters, uh, like all the characters on the show. And um, it's kind of like a paper world mm -hmm. um, with like shadows and everything. And I animated it in After Effects. So I guess that would be my very first experiment with like paper that is so cool do you do you have that posted somewhere where we can where we can see it um, or i do but it'll be hard for me to find okay <laughs> yeah. maybe another time <laughs> maybe another time <laughs> it's like hidden on my vimeo somewhere <laughs> okay um what is this uh, from zydrek uh well my name is voodoo val and i am hosting this segment with my wonderful new friend ann chen who is doing some uh paper cut out styled lettering uh in illustrator and then towards the other you know the second part of the stream or the end of the stream she's also going to be transitioning into photoshop to add some finishing touches um, on this. So welcome into the stream. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I also would like to uh, point out and do like a little uh, announcement. Um, number one, if you folks are over on the YouTube channel right now and wondering maybe why no one's answering your questions or seeing your messages, um, that is because we're actually reading the chat over on behance.net slash live. So uh, if you head over here, uh, we will be able to read your messages. You'll be able to talk with me um, and Anne. Um, and you'll also be able to get links to any resources that our moderators post for you. And it's also where you can find the challenge tab. And um, we're doing a Photoshop daily creative challenge today uh, that was hosted by Kathleen, um, who was on just before us. And uh, we have information over here that you can get where you can come get involved in the challenge, participate, and then post your work in the Discord. So real quick, I'm actually going to pull up this page to show you folks a little bit about what we're working on. Um, if you come to this page right here, behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, you can actually get a little um, uh, four-step explanation of how everything works. Um, every day we release a challenge at about 8 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can join the community chat over on Behance during those streams or watch the VODs to see our instructors kind of do uh, the first run, an example of how the challenge works. Um, you can also ask questions um, on the regular, um, either in the streams or in the Discord, uh, where we have our mentors and everybody kind of going through all of the submissions and checking them out. Um, and uh, I can actually show you our Discord um, if you guys head over to this uh, wonderful link, um, bit.ly slash PS Discord, making sure that P and that S are capitalized um, so that you get to the right server. That is where um, you will actually come to this page, um, which is, like I said, the Discord. We've got our current challenge tab here where you can scroll through and see all of the wonderful um, uh, challenges. Actually, I think I'm in the XD. Let me, let me scroll over to the Photoshop. Um, challenges. Yeah. So you can come in, you can go through the um, Photoshop challenges, see what other people are creating um, and post your own here, get some feedback and everything. And then we're also going to be looking at these towards the end of the stream, giving folks a shout out, giving them a little bit of feedback on their challenge entries um, and uh, showing off your work. Uh, let me pull this down um, for today. Oops. Let me pull up my there we go. Um, you guys saw my, my Darth Vader background for a second there. <laughs> um, for today, our challenge is creating a cover image for your Behance project. So it says use transform tools to create a custom cover image for your Behance project. You can come and um, watch the recap video of Kathleen doing the project. And you can also hit get started to download any starter files that she has created for you. Um, let me pop back over here to Anne's work. Um, and yeah, we will be uh, taking a look at all of those uh, entries and um, examples for the challenge that you folks have done during the last 30 minutes of today's stream. So I can't wait to see what you folks do. Um, I hope that you will participate um, with us. And there we go. Wade has actually posted the link to the Discord um, and to the challenge landing page for um, your uh, easy access. Thank you very much, Wade. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you folks in the Discord. Uh, Malik says hello. Jenna says hello. Welcome in, you two. Thank you so much. Um, Dave wants to know um, if you went to school for design. 
Yes, I did went to、um, college for graphic design. Nice. And、uh, just took a bunch of art classes throughout high school. I was also on the yearbook team. Nice. <laughs>、um, so that's so I started learning about like how to use InDesign pretty early on.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, I was lucky that my high school offered a commercial arts class. Oh wow!、Um, so, yeah, I was able to learn about like graphic design, like what it is and what people can do with it in high school,、mm-hmm. which I know not a lot of people have classes like that、um, back then. Now it's more common. Yeah, I, I we didn't have、um, like classes for like commercial artwork. Um, at、mm-hmm. my high school, we kind of just we had like the standard like art classes and stuff. But it sounds like、um, that sounds really awesome. Like kind of teaching you how to、um, use work for the or use art for the kind of work you would do like in a professional space. That's awesome. Ah,、uh, Jimmy, welcome in. Good to see you. Uh, Zydrek is taken off. All right, see you, man. I'll I'll talk to you next time. Thank you for joining us、uh, today. Let's see. I'm scrolling through, making sure we didn't miss anything. Do, 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 do. Everybody's saying this、uh, is a great session today. Thank you, Jessica. Um. Yeah. I. I. Uh. I myself、um, did not go to、um, design school. I was living in an area where they didn't really offer、um, those kinds of classes. So when people ask me that question, I usually tell them that I went to the University of YouTube,、um, and, and then they're like, "Yeah, like where did you learn how to paint?" I was like, "The University of YouTube," and then I did like kind of a transitional、um, uh, education period at、um, uh, the School of Adobe Live.、Um, Highly recommend those universities. They're top notch. <laughs> they're、mm-hmm. really cool. And, and they're affordable. And they're、yeah. free. Yeah, very affordable. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, anything you can learn without spending a lot of money is definitely the way to go. Mm-hmm.、Um, Isabel says hi from Switzerland. Welcome in, Isabel. I hey, love Isabel. that we have so many different people from so many different places. Like that is just so neat to me. Michelle thinks that's funny. Yes, <laughs> University of YouTube. That's that was the place for me. I should make myself a little a little、um, red and white graduation cap. That's what I should do. <laughs> yeah, I actually attended a community college first before transferring to a four year college to study design.、Mm-hmm. Um, but while I was at the community college, they So、it was a technical college, and they offered a lot of classes that、um, really focused on like the ins and outs of a software. So there was like a whole class on Adobe Illustrator, a whole class on Photoshop,、mm-hmm. and that was really helpful for me to learn how to vector and know my way around certain programs. Because、mm-hmm. once I went to a Four-year college.、Um, there wasn't any classes like that where the professors taught you how to use the software. You,、oh. it was more about like the concepts and you know the design principles and things like that.、Um, so you were really on your own. And if you weren't familiar with these softwares,、um, some students really struggled. So they just like, expected you to know、done. it. Yeah, they yeah. just expected us to. Like already know all these softwares. Oh wow! Kind of, kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really that sounds really difficult because especially if like if you come from、uh, an area where that kind of thing is not offered, then when you、mm-hmm. get to a four year school and you're like, I'm gonna learn Photoshop, and they're like, actually, you should have already learned <laughs> Photoshop.、Yes. We're gonna that would be that would throw me off. I think definitely. I'd be like, what? <laughs>、um, let's see.、Uh, Zephyr is saying, 
And why um, not use the rotate tool to make the flower petals? Are you worried that it will look too symmetric? Um, I sometimes will use the rotate tool mm -hmm. if I have like a lot of petals, um, just because I'm, I just have like five petals that I didn't feel like it was necessary for me to use the rotate tool. Mm -hmm. that, that is a great question. Sometimes it's just personal preference of the artist. We were talking about that earlier, you know? Um, I think like for me personally, like when I'm doing things like this, where I have like a, like a collage of different, well, like different elements, but they're the same. Like you have, like, they're all the same flower, but they, you know, you kind of want to make them look slightly different as they're scattered around. Um, sometimes I will duplicate them and I'll move them around and put them mm -hmm. in a different position, maybe change the size. But um, every once in a while I do like warp a petal here or, you know, move something there. Um, because I think that sometimes there's only so much you can do just by using the rotate tool and moving something to a different position, you know? Um, if you and it, it, it depends on what style you're going for, but everybody has a preference for for how that sort of thing should go. Yeah, and right now for like the sake of time, I am just duplicating a lot of shapes, mm -hmm. um, trying to get this finish. So I could bring it to Photoshop and demonstrate the color and shadows for you guys. Yeah. Um, also, um, Julia Leclerc is asking, how do you get on? Um, Adobe Live and Alberto was saying, I think you need to have a big following. Um, in my experience, no, I don't think um, that getting onto Adobe Live and doing this stream, this kind of stream requires you to have a huge following and be super famous. Um, one of my favorite things about getting to work with Adobe is that um, they are incredibly inclusive. Um, and they, they definitely consider people based on their work, um, and their skill and not necessarily if they're wildly famous for doing what they're doing. Um, we have had a lot of, um, people who, you know, on, uh, the broadcast who are quite famous, I think, but we've also had, um, some very young, uh, people who are at the beginning of their career, um, who had, you know, they're doing like quality content and, um, uh, Adobe, uh, invited them to to do some uh, some work and it, it, in my experience and I've I've been streaming um, uh, with with Adobe for five six years I think um, and in all of that time I have seen a lot of different people from different walks of life different uh, skill levels or different experience levels come through um, for streaming and it's really it's really heartening to see um, so I would say if you're looking to um, broadcast um, with us if that's something that you want um, I think the best way to to do that is to get involved in the community um, keep improving your skill do the challenges do the the Photoshop challenges the illustrator challenges the XD challenges whatever it is that you um, uh, work on um, in your life, you know, whatever your discipline is for, for creating um, and just participate with us because we've had a lot of people even um, like our good friend uh, Eric Sue who's in the chat today. Um, he's somebody who who came and, and hung out with us um, almost every day. Um, it was just, you know, our friend from the chat and um, and we had him on to come in and, and uh, do some, some XD work with us, you know. Um, I think that they choose from a lot of different people from a lot of different places. So um, I would not feel like you will not be included just because you don't have like a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Um, they are very open and very loving um, and they do consider people um, from different places. Uh, Anthony Jackson says, hello everyone. Welcome in Anthony. It's good to see you again, my friend. Uh, Eric says, when I was in SLCC, I was studying biology, wanting to be a doctor. Um, why didn't I see the obvious that web and mobile is more my thing? Took me a long while till I realized that I want to do art and design for good. Yeah, and I think when you came um, to hang out with us in the chat, um, Eric, you were saying, yeah, I just decided I'm switching to this. And then he just started working and like 
in the time that he's been here and i have seen like his uh portfolio grow and improve so much i don't like looking at his work i would never think that this wasn't what he was always doing um that's awesome yeah it's been really cool it's been very very cool yeah i i actually i think eric mentioned this but we went to high school together (laughs) yeah yeah he did he did that is so cool um, Alberto says she met Adobe Live or Behance Live. I thought she said Behance Live, like um, when Shauna and Voodoo, etc., go live on their own Behance. Oh, okay. Also for oh. their own Behance channels. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that right now uh, that the process for streaming to your own channels is in uh, beta. Um, I'm not sure 100% if signing up for the beta is still open, so I don't want to make any promises to you, but I can actually, real quick, I'm going to see if I can pull that page up. If the page is still up, I will post it to you so that you can sign up for the beta, but I'm I'm not sure if it's still active. Um, But that is how um, I... That's how I got involved, is I... um, found the 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 streaming or the the post where they were like yeah we're looking for people to stream um and i just put my email in to the beta and then one day i i got a email saying hey you've been accepted and and that's how that went um yeah i am not seeing it right now but maybe i can maybe i can do a hunt um like a more thorough hunt later when i'm not broadcasting and see if i can find it um or ask um, adobe live when they get into the chat next um but yeah that's that's how i did it i just signed up for the beta um it's not a feature that is open um to the public just yet um but i think they're working on it does someone have the Illustrator Discord? Yes. Let me find that for you. There you go. That's the Illustrator Discord. We are going to be looking at the challenge entries for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge for this particular segment. Uh, so if you have not joined the Photoshop Discord, I believe if you scroll up just a little ways, um, Waitacuff has posted, um, the community link, um, and they have also posted, or he has also posted, um, the Photoshop Discord. Um, so that is, um, where you can submit your work for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge that we're going to be reviewing. Um, and I can pull up this page real quick um, and kind of show you folks again how you can get involved in that. Um, If you're over on YouTube right now, uh, please head over to behance.net slash live because that's where we are reading the chat. It's where you will find the challenge tab above the chat that has links to all of these things. Uh, This is the landing page for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Um, You have like a one through four step process of how you can get involved with us. Um, And as you can see here, we do have our first challenge uh, unlocked for you here. Uh, And every day at eight, around 8 a.m. Pacific time, um, the other challenges will start to be unlocked daily. Uh, Today we have making a cover image is what we're working on. It says use the transform tools to create a custom cover image for your Behance project. Um, You can watch the video here, the 30 minute uh, tutorial that Kathleen actually did. She broadcast just before us, kind of showing everyone how it's done. Um, And you can also hit get started and it will give you a downloadable file um, that you can open up and have um, the assets and things that she worked with for her challenge. Uh, So that is how you can do the challenge. Uh, You can also join the Discord, um, which you can find at this place right here, um, bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S, lowercase Discord. um, So you get to the right server um, and that will bring you uh, to this place right here, which I will show you. This is the Photoshop uh, Discord. And if you go to the hashtag current challenge, which you can see right above my head there, uh, this is where everyone is dropping in their daily challenges. Uh, If you're doing challenges from past rounds of challenges, fear not, we also have a past challenge uh, area where you can post 
things from the past challenges uh, and uh, get some feedback on all your work. And there's also a really great uh, part up here in the announcements section. We have news, we have going live when people are going live, but we also have this creative uh, challenge uh, area where you can see if I scroll through here, um, every morning when the challenge is announced and the video is going live, you can see they show the little graphic for it and they have a link to where you can watch it. They have a link to the starter file. They also have a link if you missed the video. So this is a great place to go for a huge collection of all of our past challenges to find the links that you need for all those assets and get a little refresher on the challenge itself. Um, so yeah, um, I hope that you folks will join us. I can't wait to see your work. Um, me and Anne are very excited to see what the community has done and to give you a little bit of feedback on your entries. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna scroll through here, make sure I didn't miss anything. Do you know where I can sign up to get notifications of the Adobe Live? If you hover over the video player, there should be a subscribe button that you can subscribe to and you should get an email um, whenever we go live, um, if, you, if, you, if you do that. Let's see, Automatic. I automatically vector everything, says Miguel, to cut everything separately. Thank God for full color printers, <laughs> yeah. Um, why Photoshop doesn't have an infinite undo? This would make it more hard than Illustrator. Um, so Photoshop, I believe you can actually, you can actually set the amount of undos that you have. So we have like a default amount of undos that we use in Photoshop, but you can actually go change that setting. And I'm going to actually, um, I'll make sure that Anne's work is up and I'm going to hunt around because I think that there is a helpful blog post that I can actually give to you um, that will walk you through how to do that. Let me see. Right. Amount of Photoshop undo. Let me see. Yeah, here we go. Changing the number of remembered states, I believe. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me make sure this is the proper resource. Um, I'm just going to actually look that up. Photoshop changing amounts of remembered states. Yeah, here we go. How to increase the amount of available history states in Adobe Photoshop. I think that this will work here. I do usually like to find a blog post from the Adobe blog, though, just to make sure the information is up to date. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, Voodoo was right. When I first started watching Adobe Live in 2018, I was a graphic designer. For some reason, I decided I wanted to do uh, uh, UI UX design thanks to Adobe Live. Now I am a UI UX designer. Awesome! Um, Z by HP Tech Marketing. Yes, history states in performance preferences. I was hoping to find like a little step by step um, that would help um, folks, but I think I'm I'm hunting around uh, for it. This should this should be it should be on this page um, though. Let me scroll down and see if I can find it in here, and that will um, I'll link you to this one. Uh, Okay, yeah, by default, the history panel lists the previous 20 states. You can change the number of remembered states by setting a preference under preferences, 
performance. Older states are automatically deleted to free more memory for Photoshop. To, to keep a particular state throughout your work session, make a snapshot of the state. Um, so there's instructions on how to um, do this uh, on this blog post here. It's an undo and history post in the Adobe Help. Um, so there you are, folks. And Anne, this is looking so beautiful. I am Thank loving you. it. So I am now bringing my uh, shapes into uh, Adobe Photoshop. Awesome. Um, this is a bit time consuming process, but I'm trying my best to get through it so we can quickly get started with color. Um, well, I, I think it's really great um, to show that this is like what you do and and sometimes <laughs> it does consume a lot of time because I think um, when I when I first started painting, I used to watch time lapses of people paint. Um, and I watched like they would they would like make their videos of them like painting portraits or painting characters or painting creatures or whatever. And that's what I wanted to do. And I would see these videos where because certain parts were time consuming and they were worried about like boring their audience, they would fast mm. forward through certain parts more than <laughs> others. And I didn't know that. And so I was I'm here like wondering, gosh, why am I not as fast as all of these people who are doing this art, you know? Um, oh. And so I was thinking I would either like, I've kind of learned how to sketch and paint super, super fast, but a lot of it is just from like pure anxiety of like thinking that I'm going too slow, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I, cause I had no idea that, that it was sped up. And so I always think like whenever somebody on Adobe Live says, this is kind of time consuming and stuff. I'm always happy to see it because I think it shows the reality of the creative process and shows Good. people that if you're not, you know, if you're not designing like lightning, you know, that's fine. You know, that's just, that's just how it goes. That's just how everybody works. Um, so I think this is wonderful because <laughs> it's not going to make yeah. people feel like they have to design like a time lapse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so right now, um, what I did was I had, I took a screenshot of my setup in Illustrator and mm -hmm. I have it placed on the back. So I'm oh. just trying to make sure my layers are uh, placed correctly. Um, and uh, it's really important that you have all your objects in separate layers mm -hmm. because we'll have different, and that's really how you create all the the shadows and, and the depth is through the layers. Mm -hmm. Having um, them all separate and, and mm -hmm. easily edited by themselves. Uh, easiest way to paint is using a graphic tablet. Using mouse or touchpad is quite slow. You know what? It's so crazy because I um, spent a lot of time uh, even now looking at the work of like old concept artists like when digital art was like first started being um kind of a staple um, and a lot of them were painting like full-on matte paintings and movie backgrounds with a mouse and it like blows my mind that that was a thing that people used to do um and it is very hard i tried i tried to do it as like a uh challenge once timothy where i was like yeah i'm gonna do a whole painting with a mouse um, number one, it, it gave me a hand cramp and I was like, I'm going to stop this. Um, and number two, it uh, was an absolute disaster. <laughs> it was not good. It was not good art at all. Um, if you save your Illustrator file as the same size of the Photoshop file, you save some time and just need to copy and paste um, everything into the Photoshop. Oh, this from Julia. Um, maybe that's yes. an option too. Yeah, I have mine set up with like in a higher resolution in Photoshop, just in case I want to like print it out and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that think... is a great idea for me to save time in the future. I think that you definitely want it to be at, like at least 300 DPI in order to, mm -hmm. to print. Uh, but if, I mean, if you're doing... Um, uh, murals and things if you decide like maybe somebody sees this on your Instagram or something and they're like hey can you put this on the side of a building and then you probably want it even larger what is the 
What is the like the base kind of like standard thing for print if you if you end up having to do something that you create digitally um, for print I, on a building? I think for vinyl, a lot of times you just make sure your artwork is like the exact same size as you want it to be on the wall. So mm -hmm. like, like true to size, but you have it at surprisingly like 72 dpi for really? some reason really um yeah i've done that in the past not for a mural but to wrap those um have you seen like those utility boxes around the city they're just oh, like those yeah. green boxes but sometimes they're wrapped with like designs mm -hmm. um so i did a project like that for a city here in utah mm -hmm. and and um my artwork was you know two size Mm -hmm. for the utility box but my resolution was like at 72 and that's the way the printers wanted it oh wow okay um, so yeah you don't need it to be unless you're printing it on like paper mm -hmm. i think a lot of billboards and things like that are all at a pretty low dpi wow i didn't know that that's that's really interesting uh, Marla says Adobe Live has taught me that these things take time and that everyone does different things to get the results they want. Oh yes, Marla. Oh yes. And that's something Definitely. that took me a long time to like realize because I think like there's so much art in the world now and there's so many artists like showing their process. It's really, really easy, I think, to uh, get caught up in somebody else's process. Um, so I love getting to see how different designers do things differently because then it makes me feel confident in my own process like yeah you know um, these people are doing x y and z but maybe i you know find more joy in my work when i do a b and c instead you know and we get the same result but that's just what i want um and it, it helps me to kind of stay true to to what i want to be doing with my art and everything by seeing that everyone is different uh, Deanne says, I tend to save my Photoshop files at a, uh, at a point after 30-ish changes. I add the version to the file name, then I can reopen the current version if I can't undo far enough without starting from, from scratch. Gotcha, gotcha. I used to save my, my files in, like, increments like that. Um, now what I do is I just have, because I, what I was doing is I was saving duplicates of like these massive Photoshop files and then I was losing a lot of space um, and mm. and stuff. So what I started doing is when I get to a certain point where and and this could also be kind of tedious because you know you don't want your files to be individually extra large. but I started when I get to a point where I'm like, okay, I like this iteration. I select all of my layers and I group it and I name the group that version and then I duplicate that group and then start working further on that group. So then all in the same file, I can just hide iterations by the group until I go down to earlier and earlier versions of what I'm working on. And that has worked for me um, because then I don't have to keep opening other files to try and search for the versions I want. It's literally all right there in my layer panel. Um, and you could also save stuff to your creative cloud as well and then just have those files in your libraries too. Um, so you could just open up the little libraries panel in Photoshop and, and go to earlier iterations if you like as well. Um, Jillian wants to know, um, Jillian says, Hi, is there a way to continue drawing more anchor points of a shape with the pen tool after you've clicked off of it? I think you can add another point. Um, um the, so you mean like if there if I already drew a shape, can I add more anchor points to it? Yeah, and like continue um, to edit it. Yeah. You just click on the pen tool again and then you just add points to wherever um you want on the shape. I don't know why. You have to have the shape selected, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you can continue to add anchor points to it and manipulate it. That looks like a kitty cat. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> 
So are you were you holding a hotkey down when you did that or you just click the edge with the with the pen tool? Um I don't think I was holding any down hotkeys. Um the shortcut for the pen tool is P mm -hmm. and then you just click on you need to have your shape selected in order to add more. Okay. Um, anchor points to it, I believe. Yeah, because if you don't have the shape selected, you'll just start making new points for a yeah, totally a new, new shape. Point. Better save a copy before you merge layers. Absolutely. Or actually, Timothy, what you can do, and all of you other folks who were like kind of talking about um, uh, having different iterations, did you know that you can actually like. Um, another thing that I will do when I make the group iterations is if my file does start getting like super large, I will convert the entire group to a smart object. And then it's all one like compressed smart object. And then if I want to, I can right click that smart object like days, weeks, months later, and I can say um, convert smart object back to layers and it'll convert it back into a group full of all the layers that I originally put into the smart object, which is really, really cool. Um, and while it's a smart object, you can like drag it around like it's one single file because technically it is like one, um, almost, almost the same as like flattening a bunch of layers, but it's non-destructive working so you can get all of those layers back on a whim whenever you feel like it, which is really awesome. Um, Davika R wants to know, for how many years do you have experience in this field, Anne? Uh, let's see. In, I've been doing lettering for five years, and then I worked as a graphic designer for five years. I've only been freelancing full-time for one year, a little over a year. Nice, nice. Everything that you are bringing into Photoshop uh, from Illustrator um, can also be done um, directly in Photoshop. True, true. Um, I think that, um, I believe you originally said, Anne, that you know you just like doing it in, in Illustrator. I think people, kind of like we were talking about earlier, people have like um, certain ways they like to use the, the tools. Um, and I think that on Adobe Live, you'll see a lot of people that have different workflows and and like to use different programs for other things. For example, um, I used to use the Gaussian blur uh, feature in Photoshop all the time um, until I saw somebody do like this excellent blur effect in Adobe XD. And now even though I can blur stuff in Photoshop and keep everything all in the same app, I will open something in XD specifically to apply a blur to it and then export it and bring it back into Photoshop. <laughs> so it's just, it's kind of just up to the, to the, to the person working. Um, G designs. Hey Voodoo, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent. I'm hanging out with my new buddy here. Um, and she is just killing it with this design and I feel like I'm learning so much. <laughs> Uh, Malik says, I want to become an illustrator, but I can't really draw well. Should I learn to draw better or can I make it work without having good drawing skills? Um, I think that good drawing skills, um, it, it, that could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. um, I think the level of skill that you have is totally... Um, up to interpretation. Um, I'll go back to that old saying, like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, you know? Um, but I also think that if you would like to pursue uh, a career in illustration, I highly recommend taking the time to learn the basic fundamentals of drawing, because if you don't, you may find yourself in situations like I have found myself in where I want to draw things and I want to express myself artistically, but I find that oftentimes because I did not learn some of uh, the like certain important fundamentals when I should have, um, I get further in my career and I realize I lack, I lack certain knowledge. Um, and then I have to stop what I'm doing and I have to go back and learn them anyways. Um, so if you're gonna have to if you're gonna have to learn those fundamentals anyhow, you might as well uh, get it over with and and do it 
um, I would point you to an excellent book that our good friend Sam Peterson Art actually suggested to me a long time ago. Um, it's like a like a motivational kind of like businessy self organization book. Um, it's called Eat That Frog. And basically it's like if, if every single day you had to eat a frog, like a live frog, which is disgusting. If you have to do that every single day, are you going to, are you going to do it first thing in the morning, get that over with and then go on and enjoy your day? Or are you going to wait till the last minute till you absolutely must and be dreading it all day, you know? And I think your answer should be to do it get it over with and then just enjoy the rest of your time for that day, you know? Um, and I think, I think that that's exactly how you ought to be about basic fundamentals of your trade of any trade, not just illustration, but graphic art in design, UI, UX design, hand lettering, um, learn those basic fundamentals, uh, and, and get those, get that knowledge that you need because then in the future, um, you won't be just working yourself up to a point where you don't have the knowledge you need to complete a task. You'll know what you have to do because you've got that out of the way. You know what you need um, and you can just continue on. Um, and of course, you'll need to learn little things along the way, but you don't want to be uh, waiting until 11.59 p.m. to eat that frog because that sucks. <laughs> um, I guess I do remember you, um, Garof. Welcome in. Okay, so I am starting to add some colors in here. I don't have I all of it. my layers from uh, Illustrator yet, but I just thought I'd go ahead. Like we have enough in here that I can get started. Mm -hmm. We have about 20 minutes before um, we will look at uh, the, the challenge entries mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, so we definitely can uh, work on it for a little bit longer. And then I can even make sure we have a little bit of time towards the end if you think um, that you will need it. Uh, I'm loving these colors that you have chosen. This is so Thanks. my jam. I love that it's like a, it's, it's kind of like a warm, like plum purple too, which mm -hmm. is like my favorite. So this is so cool. Thank you. After live streaming, will there be a recorded video of this session? Absolutely. Um, all of our streams are actually archived either on the YouTube channel or um, if you scroll down below the video player, you'll notice there's a bunch of uh, rotating carousels of videos. Um, so the first carousel is actually our schedule. Uh, and if you scroll through there, you will see it has all of the streams that are coming up after us for the next few days. So you can see what's going on there. Um, and then below that, you'll see we have all of our streams categorized by genre. So we have uh, Photoshop, we have illustration streams down there. We've got graphic art streams. We have UI UX design streams, um, all of those things um, organized down below. Um, so you will be able to find um, these and other helpful videos uh, down there. These colors are lovely, said, says Deborah Mason. Yes, I agree, Deborah. Thank you. Yeah, and I am just using the layers to, like the color, color overlay, I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, and the layer st style settings. Um, awesome. It's just so that I can change my mind if I want to later on. And then I'm just copying my layer style onto the other objects. Oh, nice. Oh, I didn't even realize that you could do that. You just taught me something new that I'm going to use like every hey. day. <laughs> oh, wow. So you literally, so you have the layer style set. I was just like going in every individual layer I needed to be the same and like toggling on all of the same styles. This is way better. Oh, I love it. Blew my mind. Um, Joey Maloney says, where do you get inspiration for your color palettes? Hmm. Um... I think it's just mainly from what I see on Instagram or on Pinterest. I am drawn to more of like having like monochromatic tones and then having like an accent color. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I'm kind of doing that right now with it's mostly purple, but then you have like a pop of green. Yeah. Um, kind of like you did with the green in the L and then you had like that pop of yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, are there like some websites you can find color inspiration from? Um, I feel like I've encountered a few websites where it's like just a bunch of palettes that mm -hmm. people have made and uh, you can use them in your own work. I can't remember the name of it. Um, they do, you can do that with Adobe Color sometimes. Oh, okay, yes. Um, and uh, I find that's really useful. Um, but yeah, you're right, that's like a great resource, just finding a place where they have really great color palettes that you can use in your work. Also, um, uh, we are getting a request to show the copy layer style um, again. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will do that. Uh, let me figure out. Eh, maybe I'll do a lime green for the A. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Um, so basically, I just do once I have the color setting in the layers, um, I just do the right click, scroll down, copy layer style, and then right click on the layer I want to paste over and then you have the option to do the paste layer style. Wonderful, that is so cool. Ah, uh, I'm gonna use that all the time. Uh, Deborah and Eric both say um, coolers is, is a good place too. Yes, thank you for those links. Um, Adobe Capture makes color palettes from photos. Yes, I use Adobe Capture all the time. Have you ever used Adobe Capture, Anne? I have used it, I think, one time in the past. Mm -hmm. Is is that the one where it like points all the colors you have, or is it that turns it into a vector? Um, it does all of that. So oh, okay. <laughs> you can take a picture of something. Um, mm -hmm. I like to go um, like shopping, go to like a um, like an interior design store and um, find like patterns and prints that I really love and I will take pictures of them and then it will sample a color palette from that and then save it to my libraries. Um, you can also take images, uh, take photos or take a, like a picture of some art that you've done or if you just have a file in the camera roll of your phone, you can upload an image to Capture and it will vectorize um, like a black and white version um, of that as well. You can now take images and make um, 3D matte caps, so like 3D textures with it. You oh, can wow. take an image of um, text like on a, a bottle label or on your computer screen or whatever and it will actually identify the font for you so if you're like oh wow this That's is a amazing. great yeah this is a great font i just want to know what it is it'll give you sometimes it like it can't find the font but it'll give you like 30 different fonts that look exactly like it to choose from too so you never you never use that feature and um find yourself without a result which is awesome um, it also helps you make patterns so you can take a picture of something and then you can use a bunch of different kind of like kaleidoscope-esque um, uh, different settings to make a pattern that you can export. You can make brushes in it, you can make like patterned brushes with um, shapes and photos and things like live brushes which is it's just insane. It is such a cool, uh, cool program and it's just on your phone can just get it for free in the app store. So highly recommend That's it. That's awesome. Yeah, I need to play around with it more. Didn't know you could do all those things. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, Davika R says, I'm afraid that it is time for me to go. Bye and thanks to Anchen and Voodoo for tips and ideas and everyone watching this live stream, goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us, Davika. It's been yes, a pleasure. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Eric is saying Anne is so good with colors. I agree. This is, these are not, it's cool because these are not colors that like, even though I love purple, I would never have chosen these colors together, I don't think. But now seeing you like apply them in a really great way, I'm like, wow, these are really cool. Like it's teaching me about choosing colors right now um, and Thanks. like experimenting. So this is really wonderful. Uh, what app? program is that again that the one that I was just describing is called Adobe Capture 
Ooh, that paper texture. Oh, that's so yeah, good. I brought in the paper texture. Um, I think it's looking a little too out, like overwhelming right now. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna make it a little smaller. Kind of duplicate it. Oops. Let me change the opacity down a bit. Oh, how cool. Hello all, can someone please recommend any good tutorial um, for a workflow in InDesign? I struggle with that one. Every time I'm asked to design anything using it, my mind goes blank. Um, Melina, I think that there are some really great InDesign videos archived below. Um, if you're interested to check that out. And I know specifically um, Andrew Hockrattle uh, does a lot of really great InDesign tutorials and has done them on Adobe Live, which you can um, which you can find too. Um, InDesign is a, is a hard one for me as well. Um, you said that you, you learned how to do uh, InDesign early on for the yearbook um, and stuff. Do you use it often yeah. still? Um, not recently. I mean, I, I, I will still make my invoice designs mm -hmm. um, layout in InDesign. Nice. But uh, I, I used it, last time I used it was at my uh, former job as a graphic designer for to create catalogs. So it's mm -hmm. really great for yeah, making long form um, booklets and th things like that. So yeah, nice. it's definitely hard to, I would say it's, it's really different from like Illustrator and Photoshop. So oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's probably why it's hard for a lot of people. Um, but definitely a good way to create um, anything with a lot of text. Yeah. Sometimes people will try to do that in Illustrator and it's not a good idea to try and create like a catalog in Illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I think that would be like, you could maybe make a cover in Illustrator if you want, but mm -hmm. creating a whole catalog, I think would probably be a disaster. Um, yes. Robert says, is Adobe Capture part of the Adobe Creative Suite in the cloud? Um, you can save things to your Creative Cloud and libraries through Adobe Capture, but there, it's not necessary to purchase it. You can get it for free in the iTunes App Store. Um, if you just type in Adobe Capture, the icon looks like a little eyeball um, and it's like a maroon red color um, and you can just download it and start using it immediately. Um, I can't wait to see Anne drop the shadow. I'm ready to cry. Zephyr says <laughs> they're all very excited to see you start adding the shadow. Oh yeah, here we go. We're doing it. Yes, that looks so crisp. It. Oh man, that's so good. So I'm just messing around with the settings a little bit. Um, I think I want to have more of a sharper shadow. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, for the most part, like I do not know what some of these mean. Like I know mm -hmm. the opacity and distance, but I don't know what choke is. <laughs> um, but I pretty much just like play around with the settings until I see the shadow that I want. Yeah, I, I really, you know what I add um, to the, like the, sh um, my shadows and stuff all the time is I always add like noise texture. And sometimes I think I go mm. overboard with it, but I love adding noise so much, like noise textures, Me too. noise I to my actually, outer glow, everything. Yes, yes. Um, maybe I'll add the noise texture right now. So instead of like doing it individually, mm -hmm. I just, um, I create a layer, let's see, of white, put that on top, and I think I do like the, let's see what setting it is, might be the linear dodge or linear light, and then I go to, let's see where the noise is, add noise. Oh, wow. And let's see, I have to play around with the settings a bit, but mm -hmm. yeah, I also add noise to it if when I, when the texture isn't just doing it for me, mm -hmm. um, but I think the texture we have going right now is pretty good. So I'll yeah, just it looks really great. Off. <laughs> it definitely looks like thick construction paper. 
Um, also, I want to point out we've got about five or six minutes until we check out the port or yep. not portfolio reviews, the challenge entries. Um, so mm -hmm. if you folks are working on the challenge, um, even if you're not finished yet, um, even if you just have a work in progress to post, um, please click on the challenge tab above the chat, head over to the discord and post your challenge entries in the current mm -hmm. challenge channel. Uh, if you folks are over on YouTube, please head over to behance.net slash live because that is where we are reading the chat and also where you will find the challenge tab above the chat for more details on how to enter uh, because Anne and I are going to pull up the discord, um, scroll through uh, the work that you folks have posted today and give you a little bit of feedback on what you have created. I'm very excited to check out what you folks do. Um, Julia says choke like when you were going over the choke um, features in the uh, shadows there, it says choke has to do with printing um, how it meets in the press. Really? I had no idea about that. Mm. That's uh, cool. <laughs> Miguel says crazy talent. I know. I agree. This has been so cool to watch. Also, I, I noticed, one thing I noticed is that are your, la like the layers for the rings in the corner, are mm -hmm. they on a layer all together? Like all the dark purple ones are on the same layer? Yeah, I have that. Um, yeah, I grouped them all together in mm -hmm. Illustrator and brought them together as a single layer in Photoshop. Um, just that so is that so cool. they all have the same, same shadows. Um, yeah, I noticed that like because they're all together when you applied that inner shadow, it really it did it everywhere, you know, and you don't have to go mm -hmm. and spend the time doing all the individual pieces and it looks great. Register for the challenges here. Yes, thank you so much, Wade Cuff. Everyone, um Wade has posted the Behance um uh, link to the Photoshop landing page for the challenge so that you can download any assets you need uh, and also get uh, information on how to join us. And he has also posted the Discord link so that you can go in and post your entries. Uh, so thank you very much, Wade. Um, and we will be checking on those in a few minutes. Oh man, the drop shadow is just so, it's like so satisfying to watch yes. all of them come in. That's one of my favorite things. Cause I know that some people like, especially when it comes to like UI UX design, I noticed some people like they just seem to really not like drop shadow sometimes, mm. or they want like uh, a, okay. you know, like in, in like app design. And every time right. I see it, because I'm used to like graphic design, I'm like, no, there's nothing better than like a crispy drop shadow. Like <laughs> I love it so much. Um, but I, I guess, I guess maybe if you're designing apps, it's different. But yeah, every time I, think I it see has it, has to do with the trends. Like right now, it's a lot of flat shapes is popular. Mm -hmm. So maybe the shadow kind of date, dates the look. Yeah, maybe. But I'm, I'm all for a good drop shadow. That's that's my that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Um, <laughs> because this is like, yeah, like I said, it's so satisfying watching all of these crispy shadows drop in. And I'm just like, oh, now it's floating. It wasn't floating before. And now suddenly mm -hmm. it's floating. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, Eric. All the shadows. All the shadows. Yeah, JK, JK. <laughs> um... Let's see, I make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, Ted Oliver, welcome back. It's good to see you, my friend. There are definitely good and bad drop shadows. Very, very true. Very, very true. I think this is a prime example of excellent drop shadows right here. Yeah, and I have so many layers going on right now that it's getting a little confusing. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, Julia says, I love how the pink makes it look like a folded paper. It totally does. Yeah, like like there's a shadow on the other side of the background. Um, like there's mm. a crease right down the middle. That's totally how it looks to me, too. The context of this work is perfect for drop shadows. Absolutely agree, Wade. Very crispy. I don't know, like, if 
if shadows can be crispy, but that's how it is in my head. So that's what I'm going to call them. <laughs> All right, we got about a minute left. Oh, actually, it just turned to 11 o'clock. So why don't we switch gears a little bit, Anne, and um, check out the challenge entries. Um, and then I'll save some time towards the end to kind of review um, what we worked on and maybe give you a little bit more time to tidy things up if you like towards the end of the stream. So, Sounds great. Um, if you folks uh, want to follow along with us and look at all of the entries, all you have to do is go to this link right here, bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S, lowercase discord to get to the right server. Um, and I am going to, let me pull up the stream here and pull up the discord. Um, so I am over here in the discord. I'm going to go to the um, current challenge uh, tab here. Not to be confused with, we have creative challenge up here at the top. Um, but what you want to do is come down here to the feedback segment and hit current challenge because that is going to give you the current challenges that we're working on. Um, and I'm just going to start uh, at the bottom here and then like I'm going to scroll all the way down so we can see the most recent one um, and then just kind of go up until um, we kind of hit the mark for the day and then we'll come back down to see if anyone posted anything while we're uh, while we're looking for things. So um, this is from Olid. I hope, or Ulid, I hope I am not butchering that name. <laughs> uh, says, really enjoyed my first creative challenge. Here's what I came up with. Do you think the text is easy to, to read where it is placed? And what about the colors? Do they work? Um, well, thank you for, for sharing your very first challenge with us. Um, I don't know. I, I, I almost think that some of the letters maybe blend in a little bit with the... Mm -hmm the lines striking through yeah. the text in the back. What do you think, Anne? Yeah, I am feeling the same way. Um, like the word daily is right on top of like the A in mm -hmm. creative and it's getting a little hard to read just because of the lines going through it. Yeah, I think to improve this one, if it were me, I might actually add, because I think the creative in the, the creative challenge in the back looks like it's in italics. And then the daily creative challenge you have superimposed on it is not. I would see how you like it by adding the italics to the daily creative challenge that's on the top. And maybe think about doing... Um, a color layer between the background and the top text with a blending mode to kind of blend the background and that back text together a little bit so that the stark white of the text on top really pops and it's not blending into anything because you got that stark white in the background text and that's what's starting to fade into your top text um so doing a little bit of separation there i think will will make it pop um uh but those are you know those are just suggestions i think you can you can kind of choose to do um whatever you think is right um what about what about you ann um no i think you got it all i i just feel that it just needs a little bit more contrast that is all from yeah. the background the text Definitely, definitely. Um, so thank you um, again for sharing your very first challenge entry um, with us. I personally, I think the colors are really cool. So I'm loving the colors. But I, yeah, I think I think it would be great to kind of add some more contrast. Um, this one from, it looks like we got one that came in underneath from mm -hmm. Angie Babe. These are so cool. Very, um, very pretty. I love the colors. Yeah. Like the black on black is really cool. I want to know what that font is in the background. Yes. I want that for myself. Like, oh, it's got like dimensions. Like it feels like it's yeah. kind of like 3D. Yeah, it has like a almost like a half tone kind of thing mm -hmm. on it. Did you add that or is that just what the font is like? I, I want to know what that font is because I want to use that font for something. This is great. Um, and also, I guess we could kind of say for um, uh, Ulid to kind of look at Angie Babes for a pretty good, I think, example of contrast, maybe, because mm -hmm. Angie's got like pretty great contrast going where 
you know, similar colors are being used here, but that daily creative challenge definitely pops right out of the background. Yes. Um, I'm going to pull up this long one too. This long one is great. Oh gosh. This font is so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah and I like, like how the background, the background text are, you know, sitting all straight, but the daily creative challenge is at like an angle. Yeah. Um, it's very unique. That's really nice. Very cool. Very cool. Um, let's see. We got another one that came in from Harvey. Learning Photoshop, Behance, and Discord. I am enjoying the challenge. Oh, cool. It's another relatively new. Um, this one's nice. neat, too. This yes. one's, I like uh, that kind of almost like a neon bluish kind of cover, kind of color in the background. Um, and I think this is kind of what I was saying with the OLEDs is that that back creative challenge text has kind of a italic and then having the italics also applied to the daily creative challenge on the top i think just makes it really cohesive and look like it fits together what do you think Anne? yeah i like it a lot the only suggestion i have maybe is um like the spacing between the daily creative challenge like the white wider text mm -hmm. maybe that spacing could be a little smaller Mm -hmm. yeah um, i agree yeah that's just jumping out at me very cool thank you um uh big red viking awesome name it says day very one cool. cover picture <laughs> <laughs> um this is an interesting one um yeah, this is a cool font let's see i like the it, it kind of looks like a um stencil doesn't it mm-hmm um, yes, with like the textures. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what, does anything jump out at you, Anne, um, that you think maybe could be improved here? Um, I feel like maybe the light bulb and the mouse in the corner, they're mm -hmm. kind of conflicting with each other. Like, I'm not quite sure where is the focal point. Like, I feel like the mouse, because it's so far away from everything else, mm -hmm. and in like a very, um, empty area that I keep looking at the mouse, but then the yellow light bulb is kind of distracting. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely drawing my eye down to the bottom, kind of away from what seems to be the subject matter because it is so bright, totally. Um, I would almost want to see the daily creative challenge text pop like the, like the light bulb, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would want. I, in fact, I think it would be cool if maybe you tried making the, like the light bulb color, like adding that to the daily creative challenge and even the mouse click, like just to give it all like this cohesive, like pop mm -hmm. of color. Cause yeah, I think you're right. And it does kind of like pull my eyes in a bunch of different places. And then I always land on the light bulb, but it's like at the very bottom edge away from all of the interesting things in the, in yes. the project. Um, and also, I think the light bulb, um, where it's placed right now, touching the corner, it's mm -hmm. creating like this tension. A um, little tangent going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so maybe maybe play with the placement of the, of the light bulb and um, also play with the contrast of the other elements over the top. Um, but all in all, I really love the mm -hmm. vibe. I think it has a pretty consistent like vibe going with it. Like that kind of like painty stencil -y feel, which is really cool. Um, maybe even add some of that texture to the mouse clicker, to the, to the cursor. Um, but very cool. Thank you. Let's see. Um, we got another one that came in from diamond blade. Um, I, I love this one. Um, love the know. neon colors. Oh the yeah. Neon pink. It's great. I don't know how you feel, but I don't know that there's anything I would change with this one. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's really great. It just as is. Yeah. I am wondering about the, is, are there like lines that I'm seeing? Like the two lines? Yeah. I noticed like, that. Um, yeah, it, there definitely are lines. I don't know if those are if those are meant to be there. Maybe that would be the only thing I point out. Like, mm -hmm. if you're gonna put those lines there, make sure that you do it in a way that it's like obviously very deliberate. 
Um, but the contrast is really good here. The background text fits in the, um, oh, you know what those lines probably are? I think that's actually outlining the shape of, um, the Behance cover size. I think that's oh, what that is. Like maybe the crop? Playing. Yeah, so like this whole thing is like made, but when they actually upload it to their Behance, that's what's going to be showing. Um, I see. Got so they it. might be personal guides. Um, but yeah, I think that the background text goes really, really well with the color that you've chosen for the background color. Um, I think that this one kind of has what you mentioned, Anne, in previous ones where there's not too much distance between the top focal text. Um, and it pops out from the background. It's very legible um, and very understandable. So that this is cool. This is a cool one. Very uh, nice. Yeah, let's see what else we got. I'm gonna scroll up past um, Ulids. We got this one from B. Castell um, that has the Photoshop icon um, and everything. Let's click that one. Um, this is pretty cool. This is very like, um, like fun clean. promo yeah yeah um i like it it has the date it has the instructor it has the daily creative challenge and very um very legible like outright boom here it is this is what we're doing um yeah i i, I like this a lot what do you what do you think about it ann yeah i really like how simple it is um i like the texture that's going on in the background mm -hmm. um i guess the only critique that I would have is the words with Kathleen Martin. Um, the size isn't that much different than the dates. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if you want to make that part stand out more, maybe use like a bold text or yeah, um, maybe a different color. It's just that when the size is just so similar that I feel like it could be more deliberate. Yeah, I think that's a really great point because... Um... If you don't do like kind of like we were saying before like make it deliberate it looks like actually glenn said he forgot to take those guides out from the pink one so uh, they gotcha. were not supposed to be there um but i think that it's important when you do have subtle changes in a piece like this that you do make everything look deliberate otherwise um it could also be mistaken for maybe you accidentally changed the size and then it's mm -hmm. very obvious that you have four different kinds of text here. So you have the PS from the logo, you have the daily creative challenge font that you're doing, and then you have two different font sizes for the information towards the bottom. Um, so I would say either make it obviously the same size as the date or make it very obviously different from right. the date um, is what I would do. Um, but well done. I, I also like that paper texture in the back. It's very mm -hmm. soft. Um, yeah, well done. Well done. Um, let's see. We got Mark A here. Uh, BS Daily Challenge cover art with Kathleen Martin. This is cool. Um, I think I think right off the bat, one of the things that sticks out to me here is in that empty space where you have with Kathleen Martin, I almost want that text to also be slanted to kind of go with the, the slant of creative. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it looks, it looks a little bit out of place because the daily creative challenge goes very well with the background text. It's all going in one direction. Then suddenly you have that text that doesn't follow that rule. Mm -hmm. Um, what about you? Do you see anything that you that jumps out at you, Anne? Yes. Um, I would say also for the part that says with with Kathleen Martin, um, mm -hmm. you have like that gradient color going on. Um, it's making it a little hard to read. Mm -hmm. It's kind of kind of blending in with the background a little too much. Maybe change the gradient or don't have a gradient at all, just so that it's clear to read. Yeah, you could even make it the same color as the creative challenge in the mm -hmm. back, or yes. you could even make it stark white like the creative challenge in the front. I think either of those would be pretty great choices. Um, I I love actually the fact that there's like that outer glow around the front text. It kind of makes it feel like neon to me. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I would almost want it, though, to have... For you to toggle the spread on it, though, to make it so- maybe a little bit softer. Because the only thing that gets me about the outer glow is the fact that I can see the edges of right. the of the glow. So I would, like, soften it as it gets farther away from the words. What do you think about that, Anne? Yes, I agree. Um, yeah, at first I thought it was a glow, but then I noticed the hard edges. Mm-hmm. So... If you, yeah, make it more diffuse, that would look even nicer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but well done. Um, great, great colors, great vibe going mm-hmm. on here. It definitely reminds me of like a the late, late, late show with Mark and the Daily Creative Challenge, like kind of vibe, <laughs> you know, um, the Tonight Show kind of, kind of stuff like that. Yes. So, um, all right, this one from uh, Louis Furca. This is super unique. Oh, and this yeah, has the cool. guide too. So this must be what was oh, included okay. in the mm-hmm. um, in the file to show people how big their cover could be. Um, this is like also kind of like a um, stencil book. Yeah, like stencil or like yeah. um, like a like a TV show kind of branding stuff to me. To yeah, I'm getting like MTV vibes. Vibe. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, and as crazy as it is, like, I would never have chosen any of these colors to go together, but I almost like it the way it is. Like, it's it's unique and it's a little odd, but it also works because if you, if you look closely, like, the contrast is great to mm-hmm. me. Like, you can clearly see every element. What do you think, Anne? Yeah, I think the colors work really great right now. Um, you're using all the warm colors with like the purple, reds, and yellows. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't really have any critiques on this. Yeah, um, I I agree. I think the same thing. I love that you seem to, it looks like you took a brush in the back and kind of did some strikes through the big text in the back to add even more texture. Um, and I just think that's really cool. Um, well done. This is very unique. Uh, yes. Great I, I love job. It. Yeah. Uh, and I'm keeping track of time here. I think maybe we'll look at one more. Um, and then we'll go back to your work, um, Anne, and let you kind of do a recap of what you've done today and and so on. So let's see. This one from um, Vicky Name. Um, and Vicky asks, too much. Um <laughs> You know, um, I don't know how you feel, Anne, but I almost feel like it wouldn't be too much if the text was maybe going in a more cohesive direction, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. the fonts are definitely different, um, but if you, if you added a little bit more contrast and maybe flip the direction of the front text, it might not clash so much i really love that background text with the bevel yes and emboss and stuff what do you think about it um i guess the only thing that i'm seeing that i would want to change um is the it seems like there's some sort of warping effect going on on the daily creative challenge text yeah. so that um the letters are getting kind of too squished together Mm -hmm. So that can be a little hard to read. Um, So that's the only thing that I would change. Otherwise, I really love like the bevels and the colors you choose. You chose for the background. Um, Yeah. And it looks like the background text actually looks like it's like an enamel pin or something. Oh, yeah. It's got like a little dimension to it. Yeah, definitely. And I think that is so cool. Um, I would love even if you wanted to post like the, like a screenshot of the settings you used for the bevel and emboss, because this would be like a really great way to apply to like a enamel pin mock-up. Like seriously, I think that that looks Mm -hmm. really cool. Um, so thank you. That was from, from Vicky Naim. Um, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I do want to make sure um, that we do like a proper recap and say a proper goodbye um, to Anne. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop it here um, and flip back over to your work, Anne. Um, and why don't you, um, I think you maybe wanted to um, uh, do like a recap and show what you did um, and uh, let us know um, what, 
you know, your thoughts on everything that we worked on and stuff today. Um, and then let us know where we can find you online. Let us know where we can find you on sure. social media. Yeah, so let me jump back into Adobe Illustrator. Um, so today we worked on a paper type illustration. I did the letter A in a um, inverted slab serif style. And I have these apple, apple blossoms um, in the background. And these are all individual objects. Um, and I brought them into Photoshop um, as separate layers. Mm -hmm. And I started adding colors using the layer settings. So I double click on them to go to the color overlay. Um, to choose my colors and I also use the drop, drop shadow in the layer style and um, I didn't get through all the layers but you can see a little bit of what um, the final would look like if I had completed the entire theme but I do have a few examples here if you missed that in the beginning um, of the letter L for lemon oh, man. and I have letter K and these all made with Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, the Photoshop I use for color and textures. And to create the texture, I just found like this cool um, paper texture. It might not even be a paper texture. <laughs> it kind of looks like like the road, like the street, mm -hmm. concrete or something like that. But um, it works really great and makes the overall um, feel like it's paper. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I love, like I said, um, there's been a lot of really fabulous parts of the stream today. Um, but I think the most satisfying is those crispy shadows, man. I'm just loving it. Um, are you going to be um, posting this to social media and stuff? Like, or will you finish it after the stream and then post it so we can see the finished product? Yeah, I'll definitely finish this. And then you guys can find it on Instagram. Um, my handle is Ann Lettering. So it's just A-N-N -N and then the word lettering. Awesome. It's actually a pun on hand lettering. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> um, so, so, um, uh, and lettering on Instagram, and then um, I believe that your Behance link is posted in the info section before the video mm -hmm. under the video player. But Wade will post those links um, in there. And then also yesterday you talked about um, some really fabulous uh, resources and things that you have on your website. So maybe you can you can talk to us about those. I know you have a like a newsletter and things like that. Um, that I'm sure everybody would be very interested in hearing about. Yeah, I have it pulled up. So I've been sending out um, vectoring worksheets to help people learn how to use the pen tool. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can go to, you can subscribe my newsletter at join.nlettering.com or on my website, nlettering.com, um, click on the subscribe button. Mm. But yes, I've been sending out free uh, vector worksheets with like little hints on how to drag your like which direction to drag the mouse and how to place your anchor points and things like that so that is so cool yeah <laughs> that is awesome check that out how neat is that yeah i'm so excited i'll probably have to do some of these just to get more familiar with the pen tool because sometimes sometimes i work it out and sometimes i'm just like ooh, big yikes <laughs> sometimes it's not good so this is great um so definitely guys um check out uh ann's website um for a chance to get these awesome um uh, work sheets and everything uh she will be posting uh the work that she has done for the stream the finished versions on her instagram um and stuff and then um maybe i, I think we have like another minute or so do you have any um uh plans for any other projects coming up or should we just uh tune in to social media um just to find out whatever you decide to to work on next yeah, I would definitely say follow me on Instagram if you want to know what I'm up to. <laughs> um, awesome. Right now, I am working on updating my online shop. Ooh. So I have a couple stickers that I'm going to add soon. 
um, a few weeks ago, I asked my Instagram audience what stickers to make. Like, mm -hmm. I let them vote on it. Nice, um, nice. So yeah, I'll have some stickers up on my shop soon. <laughs> awesome, I can't wait. Well, that is all the time we have today, folks. Uh, please stay tuned because we have a lineup of a bunch of other really excellent designers um, and illustrators coming up for the rest of the day. Uh, so don't miss them. Uh, me and Anne are going to take off, but yeah, the day is not over, folks, so definitely stay tuned. Um, thank you all for joining us, uh, Anne, thank you so much for being with me today. It's been an absolute pleasure hosting you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, everyone, and Val, thank you for being an excellent host. Oh, thank you so much. Um, we're going to say goodbye now, but we will um, probably see you folks around the internet um, at another time. So bye, everyone. Bye.